we're looking at understanding the critical importance of protecting your data from loss or theft. Welcome to another masterclass session and this is to everyone joining us wherever you're joining us from. Today we're taking a very close look at a key topic in cyber security and that is data loss prevention or DLP for short. Now you might be wondering what exactly is DLP and why should I care about it? Well, I will tell you why you should care about it in a bit, but first, my name is Todo Dokwe Michael, your host and lead coach at Excel My Cyber, where we make cyber's ready career dreams come true in just 90 days. In this session, some of the important aspects of DLP you will learn about are the definition and objectives of data loss. Alright, you're going to look at how DLP works, benefit of implementing DLP, importance of DLP in cybersecurity, type of data threat, and best practices for effective DLP. Then, we will discuss the importance of DLP in protecting sensitive information, ensuring regulatory compliance, and safeguarding business assets. Also, we will dive into how DLP works, involving people, processes, and technology. And we'll also examine the types of data threats that DLP aims to protect against, including cyber attacks, malware, and even insider risk. After that, we will explore the benefit of implementing a robust DLP strategy, such as improved data classification and monitoring, and so much more. Meaning, you have to sit tight for this one. There's a lot more for you. Sit tight and enjoy and learn as we take this ride together. Now, just for a moment, imagine an organization with access to your personal information falls victim to a cyber attack. Let's say, for instance, your bank and all your confidential data ends up falling into the wrong hands. That's a nightmare scenario that we all want to avoid today. And today, I will show you how cybersecurity experts help us avert this type of trouble with data loss prevention. DLP is all about implementing measures to ensure that sensitive data stays secure and doesn't get lost or misused. Whether it's protecting customer data, trade secrets, or complying with regulations like GDPR, DLP plays a vital role. So let's get started and uncover the essentials of data loss prevention. Now that we know why data loss prevention or data protection is crucial, let's define what data loss prevention is. In simple terms, DLP is a strategy that combines various tools and processes to ensure that sensitive data does not get lost or fall into the wrong hands. Simple as that. For example, imagine you're working at a company with confidential client information. What DLP does is it helps to monitor and control how the information is used and shared making sure that only authorized personnel have access, all right? This way, it prevents data breaches and helps the company comply with regulations like HIPAA or GDPR. With DLP, organizations can significantly reduce the risk of such costly incidents. So DLP not only safeguards your data, but also ensures that you are following the rules that are laid out by various laws and regulations. It's a comprehensive approach to keeping your data safe and secure. But why is DLP so important? Let's break it down into three key reasons. Why? First, DLP help you prevent data breaches. Now imagine if a hacker gain access to your company's customer database. That could be disastrous, both financially and reputation-wise. And that is for you and even for the organization. So DLP tools and processes, they help ensure that sensitive information like customer data or financial records does not end up in wrong hands. According to IBM's cost of data breach, they have a report for 2022, 83% of companies have experienced more than one data breach. 83% showing the ongoing risk. That's a lot, if you ask me. Secondly, regulatory compliance is a major concern for businesses today. There are stringent laws such as EPA in the healthcare industry and GDPR in the European Union. And this mandates that companies must handle 
and protect your personal data in ways that fall in line with their regulations. Failing to comply with these regulations can result in hefty fines and legal troubles. So DLP helps you stay on the right side of these laws by ensuring that your data handling practices meet all required standards. Lastly, protecting business assets is crucial. This includes safeguarding your intellectual property like patent technology or confidential business strategies, which gives your company a competitive edge. If this information is leaked, it could be used by competitors or malicious actors to harm your business. In fact, according to a report by Kaspersky, 45% of data breaches involve the theft of intellectual property. Can you imagine that? This emphasizes the importance of protecting this asset. This simply means that DLP is about ensuring your valuable data remains secure, compliant, and within your control. So if you're the cyber security professional in charge of this, this falls under your purview. Now let's explore how data loss prevention actually works. DLP is not just about installing software. It's a holistic approach that involves people, processes, and technology working together. We're going to start with people. One of the most important aspects of DLP is educating and training your employees. They need to be aware of the risk and understand how to handle sensitive information properly. And this includes recognizing phishing attempts, using secure methods to transfer data, and even knowing what constitutes a data breach. Because you'll be surprised, some don't even know. These are the policies and procedures that your organization puts in place to manage data. For instance, you might have rules about who can access certain types of data, how data should be encrypted, and what steps to take in the event of a potential data breach. These processes help ensure that everyone in the organization knows their role in protecting data. Finally, there's technology. This includes various tools and systems designed to protect, okay, and to detect and prevent data leaks. For example, antivirus software can help you protect against malware while AI and machine learning can identify suspicious activities just by comparing content to your organization's DLP policies. These technologies work together to monitor the data flows and ensures that sensitive information remains secure. Now, a report by Cybersecurity Ventures shows that spending on AI in cybersecurity is expected to grow to $46.3 billion by 2027. This underscores the critical role of technology in modern DLP. So, DLP is essentially a combination of these three elements, people, processes, and technology. And they have to work in unison to protect your data. To understand why DLP is so essential, we need to look at the different types of data threats that organizations face. Now, let's go through some of the most common ones. First, we have cyber attacks. These are deliberate attempts by hackers to gain unauthorized access to computer systems and steal, modify, or destroy data. Examples include distributed denial of service. And that's an attack where attackers flood a network with traffic so much to disrupt services. And ransomware attacks, which we'll talk more about in a moment. Then there is malware or malicious software, as you may want to call it. I have a video where I spoke about this at length. You can go check that out later. Now, back to malware. This includes viruses, worms, spyware that can infiltrate your systems and cause significant damage. For instance, a virus might corrupt files, while spyware could steal sensitive information by recording your keystrokes. Insider risks are another serious threat. This occurs when employees or contractors or partners, they misuse their access to data. Sometimes it's intentional, like an employee stealing information to sell to a competitor. Other times, it's accidental, but the impact can be just as severe, either accidental or intentional. Okay. According to the 2022 Insider Threat Report, 68% of organizations feel from moderately to extremely vulnerable to insider attacks. That's why we have rules like vendor risk management, where you monitor third-party vendors to know how much risk they pose to you or your business. 
Next is unintended exposure. This happens when employees unknowingly share sensitive information. It could be something as simple as sending an email with confidential data to the wrong person. Tools like identity and access management can help control this by controlling who has access to what information. Also, we are phishing, particularly sneaky threats. It involves fraudulent emails that appear to come from irreputable sources and tricking people into revealing personal information like password or credit card numbers. Now imagine getting an email that looks like it's from your bank, but it's actually from a scammer that is phishing at work. Lastly, there's ransomware. Ransomware is a type of malware that locks you out of your own data or system until you pay a ransom. This can be incredibly disruptive, especially if your organization rely on constant access to their data to do business. Now, according to CyberSecurity Ventures, ransomware damages are predicted to cost $265 billion annually by 2031. Each of these threats can have a devastating if impact on an organization, which is why a comprehensive DLP strategy is so important. So with this, we can protect ourselves against varied and constantly evolving threats. Now that we understand the threat, let's talk about the benefits of implementing DLP strategy. First and foremost, DLP allows you to classify and monitor sensitive data. This means that you can identify what data is sensitive, where it is stored, and how it is used across your organization. For example, knowing which documents contain customer personal information and ensuring they are handled correctly. Okay? Another key benefit is the ability to detect and block suspicious activity. With DLP in place, you can automatically identify and stop an unauthorized attempt to access or share sensitive data. Imagine an employee trying to email a confidential client list outside of the company. A DLP can prevent this from happening. Yes. Automating data classification is also a huge advantage. DLP tools can automatically classify data based on predefined rules, such as identifying credit card numbers or social security numbers. Now, this automation improves efficiency and reduces the risk of human error because people make mistakes, right? Yeah, we all do. This one, however, can cost your company millions of dollars. So automation is the way to go. DLP is also useful for maintaining regulatory compliance, which is a necessity, if I may say, for avoiding fines and legal issues. DLP helps you ensure that your data handling practices complies with laws like HIPAA, GDPR, and others. For example, during an audit, you can demonstrate that sensitive data is properly protected and managed. Finally, DLP provides improved visibility and control over your data. It is great for getting insight into how data moves within your organization and who can access them. This visibility helps you quickly identify and not only that, respond to potential data breaches or misuse right on time. Based on a report by Gartner, we know that organizations with DLP systems in place experience 70% fewer data breaches compared to those without DLP. These statistics is a good indicator that the effectiveness of DLP in safeguarding sensitive information is not something that we can overemphasize. Now, it's time to check out some best practices for implementing DLP effectively. These steps will help ensure that your data protection strategy is robust and efficient. The first step you need to take is to start by identifying and classifying sensitive data. This means taking stock of all the data your organization handles and determining which pieces of this data are sensitive. For example, personal customer information or proprietary business data, they are sensitive, right? So by labeling and organizing this data, you can better monitor and protect it. Next thing you want to do is use data encryption. Encrypting data both at rest, that is when it is stored, and in transit, that is when it is being sent, ensures that even if unauthorized individuals access 
the data, they won't be able to read it. For instance, encrypting emails that contain sensitive information will help you protect them from being intercepted and either read or understood by malicious actors. Another best practice to observe is securing your systems. Yes, this involves limiting data access to only those employees who need it to do their jobs. Implementing role-based access control is a great way to achieve this. All right? For example, only HR personnel should have access to employee records. Only HR. Also, you need to implement DLP in phases. You're not going to do everything at once. Start with small, manageable projects that addresses your most critical data. For instance, you might begin with protecting customer data in your sales department. Once you have this initial phase under control, you can gradually expand your DLP implementation to other areas of your organization. And finally, you want to automate processes as well. Automate processes wherever possible. Automation reduces the risk of human error and it also increases efficiency. Okay. For example, automated data classification tools can quickly and accurately label new data as you're creating it and this ensures that it's always protected according to the policies that you have identified or written okay now by following these best practices you will be well on your way to creating a comprehensive and effective dlp strategies that protect your sense your sensitive information from a wide range of attacks if we're going to implement a dlp strategies we need to also know the different type of DLP solutions and, and tools that are available. Now, it is important to know that selecting the right DLP solution for your organization is important, and it often involves using a combination of different tools to cover all bases. Top of my list here is email DLP. Yes, this type of solution focuses on protecting sensitive data within email communications. It scans outgoing and incoming emails for sensitive information and can block, quarantine, or even encrypt messages to prevent data leaks. For instance, if an employee tries to send an email containing a client credit card information, the email DLP system can prevent that email from being sent. Okay? Following that, we have Endpoint DLP. This solution monitors and controls data on endpoint devices like laptops, desktops, and even mobile phones. It helps to prevent data loss from these devices, whether they are connected to the network or they are offline. For example, Endpoint DLP can block attempt to copy sensitive files to a USB drive because people do that a lot. So it will help you prevent that from happening. Network DLP is another critical tool. It secures data in transit across your organization's network. This means that monitoring and controlling data as it moves through your network to ensure that it's not being sent to unauthorized locations okay network dlp can help detect and block attempt to transfer sensitive data over the internet finally there's cloud dlp yes as small organizations move their data to the cloud it's essential to protect data stored and processed in cloud environment Cloud DLP solutions, they help monitor and secure data within cloud services, ensuring compliance with data protection regulations and preventing unauthorized access. For example, it can prevent sensitive files from being shared with external parties through cloud storage services. Each of these solutions plays a vital role in a comprehensive DLP strategy. Now, by integrating all these various types of DLP, you can create a robust defense against data loss, covering all possible avenues where data might be at risk. You also need to know that, according to a report by Forrester, companies using comprehensive DLP solutions saw a 58%, 58% reduction in data breaches. And this demonstrates the effectiveness of these tools in protecting sensitive information that we are talking about. So it is definitely something that is worth checking out. Now, I want us to bring this concept to life with a case study. Shall we? You ready? Okay. We'll be using ABC Corporation, a company that was struggling with data breaches and compliance issues. 
They had sensitive customer information and intellectual property that needed protection, but they were experiencing frequent security incidents. ABC Corporation then decided to implement a comprehensive DLP strategy. They incorporated email DLP to protect sensitive information in their communications, endpoint DLP to monitor and control data on their devices, network DLP to secure data in transit, and cloud DLP to protect data stored in cloud services. The results were impressive. After implementing these DLP solutions, ABC Corporation saw a 50% reduction in data breaches. They also achieved improved compliance with major regulations like GDPR and HIPAA, which not only helped them avoid fines, but also boosted their reputation with customers and their partners. This case study highlights the tangible benefit of a well-executed DLP strategy. By addressing data protection comprehensively and using the right tools, organizations can significantly enhance their security posture and compliance effort. So, while DLP offers many benefits, it's not without the challenges. Yes, let's discuss some common hurdles organizations face when implementing DLP. First, DLP implementation can be complex. Yes, often requires integrating various tools and processes across different parts of the organization. This complexity can make it difficult to deploy and even manage it effectively. Secondly, user resistance is a common issue. Yes, you might be surprised that employees might resist new policies and controls, especially if they perceive them as burdensome or disruptive to their workflow. But effective communication and training are essential in this area to overcome this resistance and also ensure that you have buy-in from all your staff. This is one of the areas where you can help your organization as a cybersecurity professional. I mean, in terms of educating other staff who may not recognize the potential threats the organization faces without a DLP strategy. Thirdly, false positive can be a problem too. If your DLP policies are too aggressive, it might block legitimate activities, and this will lead to frustration and potential productivity losses. Now, it matters at this point that you fine-tune your DLP rules to balance security and also usability. So you want to ensure that there is a balance between protecting your systems and totally disrupting the flow of work that is being done. The fourth one to consider is that DLP can be resource intensive. It requires ongoing management, monitoring, and updates to remain effective. And this can be challenging for organizations with limited IT resources. And according to a survey by Enterprise Management Associates, 54% of organizations cited complexity and resource requirement as their biggest challenges in managing DLP systems. Addressing these challenges requires careful planning, it requires continuous improvement, and even a commitment to building a culture of data security within that organization. Now that that is sorted, let's talk about DLP implementation steps. How do we implement it, right? Let's talk about that. It is important to know that implementing DLP effectively requires a structured approach. Now I'm going to give you key steps to guide your implementation process, all right? You want to start by assessing your needs. Identify the types of sensitive data your organization handles and prioritize your data protection requirement because understanding what you need to protect and why you need to protect it is the foundation of a successful DLP strategy. After this, you want to develop a clear data protection policies and procedures. This should outline how data should be handled, who has access to it, and what actions to take in the event of a data breach. Policies provide a framework that guides employees' behavior and ensures consistency in data handling practices. All right? Now, another thing that is very important is selecting the right DLP tools to meet your needs. Evaluate different solutions based on your specific requirements, such as email DLP, endpoint DLP, network DLP, or cloud DLP. 
this will ensure that tools you choose to integrate, you know, they integrate well with your existing systems and workflows because there's no need for it if it doesn't fit into your structures, okay, or the structures that your company already has in place already. Now, before a full rollout, before you roll out this DLP, conduct a pilot project. You want to start with a small scale implementation to test the effectiveness of your DLP tools and processes. You're going to use this phase to gather feedback, identify any issues, and even make necessary adjustments. Now, once this pilot phase is successful, you will now want to proceed with full deployment. You roll out your DLP strategy across the entire organization, ensuring that all employees are trained and aware of the new data protection measures. Finally, continuous improvement is essential. You can't leave it just that. Regularly review and update your DLP strategies to keep pace with evolving threats and even changes in your organization. In addition to that, conduct periodic audits to assess the effectiveness of your DLP implementation and make adjustments as needed. Okay, see by following these steps, you can implement a robust and effective DLP strategy that protects your sensitive data from a wide range of threats. But after we have taken these implementation steps, we must also measure the effectiveness of our DLP strategy to ensure that it provides the intended protection. And I'm going to give you some ways to gauge your DLP effectiveness. First, establish key performance indicators, popularly known as KPIs. This might include metrics such as the reduction in data breaches, compliance rates with regulations like GDPR or HIPAA, and even employee adherence to data protection policies. For instance, if your DLP system has reduced data breaches by 30% over the past year, without a doubt, that's a clear indicator of its effectiveness. So regular audits are another critical tool. You also need to periodically assess your DLP performance to identify the strength and areas for improvement. And this is where audit comes in. Audit will help you ensure that your policies and tools are functioning as intended and that your organization remains compliant with relevant regulations. Incident analysis is also important. Yes, you will need to review any data breaches or near misses to understand what went wrong and how similar incidents can be prevented in the future. See, analyzing incidents provide valuable insight into potential weaknesses in your DLP strategy. Finally, established feedback loops. Oh, I can't overemphasize this. You want to gather input from employees and stakeholders to identify any issues or challenges they face within the DLP implementation. This feedback is essential for making continuous improvement and ensuring that the DLP strategy is effective and user-friendly. Because by regularly measuring DLP effectiveness, you can make informed decisions to enhance your data protection strategy and also ensure that it remains robust against evolving threats. Now, as we look to the future, several trends are shaping the evolution of data loss prevention. Taking the lead are AI and machine learning. They are becoming increasingly important in enhancing threat detection and responses. And these technologies can analyze vast amounts of data to identify patterns and anomalies that may indicate security threats. According to Gartner, by 2025, 50% of organizations will use AI in their DLP strategies to improve threat detection and response times. Integration with cloud services is another significant trend. As much as organizations move their data to the cloud, protecting this becomes paramount. Like I mentioned earlier in this session, cloud DLP solutions are designed to secure data stored and processed in cloud environment, ensuring compliance with data regulations. Behavioral analytics is also gaining traction. By analyzing user behavior, organizations can identify anomalies that may indicate insider threats on compromised accounts. For example, if an employee who typically access certain files 
suddenly start downloading large amount of data, this could trigger an alert for further investigation. Okay. Another one that is so, so trending right now is automation. It's a key trend. Automating DLP processes reduce the need for manual intervention. It increases efficiency and reducing the risk of human error. For instance, automated data classification tools can quickly and accurately label new data. And it ensures that it is always according to your policies. Staying ahead of this trend is essential for maintaining a robust and effective DLP strategy. How do you do that? You leverage advanced technologies and adapting to changes in the data protection landscape for your organization so that you can continue to safeguard its sensitive information against emerging threats. Now let's address some common misconception about DLP. Misconception one is that DLP is only for large organizations. Hmm. This is not true. I can tell you that. DLP is essential for businesses of all sizes. It doesn't matter your size. Small and medium-sized businesses are often targeted by cyber criminals because they have weaker security measures. So implementing DLP can help protect these businesses from significant financial and reputational damage. Another misconception is that DLP is a one-time implementation. In reality, DLP requires continuous monitoring and update to remain effective. Cyber threats are constantly evolving and DLP strategies must adapt to these changes. Regular audits and updates are necessary to ensure ongoing protection as well. Now, some people may also think that DLP can prevent all data breaches. Well, while DLP significantly reduces the risk of data breaches, it cannot eliminate all threats. Okay? DLP is a critical component of a broader cybersecurity strategy, but it should be complemented by other security measures such as endpoint protection, network security, and user education. Finally, there's a misconception that DLP is just about technology. Effective technology or effective DLP involves people, processes, and what? I said it earlier, and technology. So employee training, clear data handling policies, and robust technological tools, they all play a vital role in comprehensive DLP strategies. So understanding and addressing these misconceptions can help organizations implement more effective DLP strategies and better protect their sensitive data. As we come to the end of our presentation, let's recap the key point. Data loss prevention or DLP is crucial for protecting your organization's sensitive information. It's not just about technology, it's a holistic approach that includes people and processes and technology as well. Implementing DLP helps prevent data breaches, ensures regulatory compliance and protects your business asset. We've also discussed how DLP works, the type of threat it protects against, the benefit of implementing DLP, common best practices, common challenges, and even future trends. And we also addressed some misconceptions about DLP. If your organization hasn't already considered a DLP solution, now is the time to evaluate your needs and explore the options that are available. See, staying informed about the latest trend and best practices in data protection is essential for maintaining a robust security posture. Thank you for watching to the end. I hope this session has provided valuable insight into data loss prevention for you. For more masterclass sessions like this, give this video, please give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. You can also drop topics you need a class on in the comment below and I will look into making a video about it. See you next time. Thank you. Bye for now.